What is up, watch people? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. Today I'm wearing my Rolex Submariner, reference number 124 one, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, man. Talk about a mind. It's a, yeah, it's a story of my life this week, man. It's not uh I'm, and I'm not on painkillers for my back. I, you know, just got the two shots. I, I turned down the painkillers. Um, anyway, so today uh, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Um, it's actually kind of two separate questions that I'm going to integrate into uh, a two-part answer in one video. I could have made two separate videos for this just for the content, but it's this is kind of a, a good question. And this was asked by my sister, who actually knows the answer to this. I know she does, but she sent me an email and she asked me, what what is hot hor hot horology and then the other question was why are vacheron constantin uh, steel models more expensive than rolex steel models so we're going to get into that so let's roll the int intro intro oh man i can see how this is going to go all right <laughs> Let's see if we can get through this uh, without stuttering or mumbling a month. <laughs> I'm not even drinking. Jeez, I haven't had a beer. I'm drinking freaking water here, you know? Um, first, I want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, commented on my last video. Um, you know, it, that, it, my last video was yesterday. Um, and, you know, yeah, it was, I was a bit down and out, you know, just simply because my back. And, you know, when, when you have a bad back, it just, it can destroy everything about you you know what i mean watches are the last thing on my mind when, when i have a bad back so i appreciate everyone i love all you guys um thank you for all the new subscriptions and subscribers and and all that so um all right so the question is what is hot horology and then the second part of that well it was a se separate question is why are vacheron constantine still steel models more expensive than rolex steel models so let's start with the first one, hot horology. Hot horology is basically, there's a hot horology, not hot, like that's fucking hot horology, brosith. Um, is it means high horology, high end watchmaking. Brands like Patek Philippe, Vacheron, Constantin, Audemars Piguet, Gégé Lecoultre, um, and there's a lot. Breguet, you get, it just goes on, all right? You know, generally in a case of hot horology, is you know a watch brand for one that does have history and heritage although you get watchmakers now that, that uh, can build tourbillons and, and perpetual annual calendars things like that but essentially what it is is it's the high end of watchmaking meaning putting complications for instance it doesn't always have to be a complication but it's a really it's a watchmaker that is so skilled that can create something like a tourbillon for instance a tourbillon would be um So it's uh, basically it's a it's a a function in itself um, that is used for gravity. All right. So in a sense, um, back in the before there was wristwatches, there was pocket watches, and these watchmakers would make these watches, and then they would sit in the pocket in various different angles, right? And then we'd keep accurate time based on the way that that watch was where it was. So the tourbillon was created for gravity. However, that watch sat, whatever direction it was, it sort of stabilized it and kept the watch as if it were just sitting straight and keeping time. Okay, so in itself, it's a complication is what I was meant to say earlier, but uh, it's a very complicated uh, complication for a wristwatch that generally for this most part is not really needed. It's just something that's pretty cool, but really, really expensive. Um, in itself it's extremely intricate um it's just very difficult companies like rolex don't do tourbillons you know um and like for instance a, perpet a perpetual calendar um which started back uh with P patek philippe you know someone with a, it started with a pocket watch 
and then it was integrated in a Patek Philippe pocket watch that was converted into a wristwatch. Um, a perpetual calendar, for instance, a calendar goes, it can start with anything just from a date aperture, just telling you the date, to a day date, day date month, uh, day date a year, um, and then from there it goes on. So the, the perpetual calendar, um, or a general calendar is a calendar, and you have to set it occasionally depending on the days of the month. Okay, so a perpetual or a annual calendar has to be set once a year. Okay, so it knows you know if there's a leap year or, or whatever, it, but it has to be set once a year. Uh, a perpetual calendar calendar um, needs can be set uh, once a century, and that's it. That's like mind-boggling how it knows that all the dates of the week, the days, and everything like that for for a hundred years, right? Um, however. Those kind of watches, this is where the watch winder really comes in. You really need a watch winder for these things because if it stops and you have to reset it, it's a total, a total bitch, right? So um, it's a pretty crazy thing. So tourbillons, calendars, the decoration of a watch, um, meaning, you know, it's got the Geneva waves. Um, it's got hobnail hand uh, done engravings on the, the dial or in Patek Philippe on the case, you know, the gem setting, everything is done by hand. So for instance, that's, that's Hophorology, okay? Um, whereas some companies, let's just use any, most other brands, you know, can get a movement from Eta or Salita, adjust it to whatever standards they want, still, still put their name on it, calling it a blah, blah, blah model, right? but really it's just a a Salita or an Eta movement, right? Um, so, and they get adjusted. Keep in mind that these other watch companies, they have watchmakers, you know? Um, can they can they make a tourbillon? Can they make a perpetual calendar, annual calendar? Maybe they can, but those brands don't do that, right? So those other brands, you know, when I talk about, say, Rolex is not hot horology, okay? So, when you look at something like Rolex, and now let's compare the two, Rolex versus Vacheron Constantin, all right? Um, Rolex are mass-produced watches. They make about a million, if not more than that. It's been said a million and a half watches per year. Um, they're, the making, uh, they're automated. So for the most part, they're machine-made, you know? Um, watchmakers do touch the watches. Yes, they do. They, they have to adjust them. They have to do the things that they do. Um, but there's no real major complications. You know, there's a, a chronograph in the Daytona um, and the, the Sky Dweller um, has that complication as well that I just can't think of it off my head because right now I'm just fumbling my words. But um, essentially, Rolex are a watch company that is mass produced and their goal is to make a lot of watches and sell a lot of watches. And they do that very well. We all know that because... Rolex, there's a waiting list, you know? I mean, there's two to five year waiting list just for this watch that I'm wearing right now. Um, so, it, you know, but that's, that's the thing. Um, where, the, where the cost comes in uh, with something like, again, Rolex, um, again, they're, they're mass produced. Uh, Vacheron, <clears throat> Vacheron Constantin uh, is not mass produced. Uh, those watches are primarily mostly handmade. Everything about those watches are done by a watchmaker. Um, granted, probably there's a lot of it that, that does have some machinery to it, um, but for the most part, uh, there's a watchmaker spending, that spend, uh, the Vacheron Constantin, Patek Philippe, whatever, spends way more time in the watchmaker's hands than what a Rolex does. Um, Vacheron Constantin only makes 20,000 to 25,000 watches a year, and that's it, so a whole lot less, okay? So when you're comparing a Rolex uh, stainless steel model to a Vacheron stainless steel, take the 56 Vacheron, retails at about 12,000, 13,000, let's just say. Um, you know, that's a, an amazing, you know, price for, for what Vacheron and Constantin are. Um, again, that has a calendar function, a date aperture at the, at the three o'clock. Um, but at that price point, it's really essentially not that much more than some of the Rolex steel models, right? So, but essentially what you're paying for is the, the Vacheron name, what that brand stands for, because, you know, they make 
some incredible watches. Um, again, you know, with with the, the annual perpetual calendar calendars, the traditional with the with the tourbillon, flying tourbillon. Um, with the flying tourbillon, well, it's 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 a tourbillon, but as it as it's moving, it ro rotates as it's oscillating and doing its thing. It it, it turns, you know. Try to get one of those repaired if it breaks. You know, really, really expensive. So um, essentially, that's. I hope this answered the question. I'm, I know there's more that's in my head, but I'm just fumbling all my shit today. So again, I thank everyone for watching, liking, and subscribing. Keep doing that. I really appreciate it, man. Um, it does mean a lot. And uh, so, having said that, we're gonna go grab a beer and talk to you later.